Hello, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Oracle Instant Client SQL Plus tools to connect to your autonomous database on the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. So a prerequisite is that you have a database created on the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. We'll begin by downloading the Oracle Instant Client and the SQL Plus tool and then configuring it to connect to the database. So begin by going to otn.oracle.com and from the downloads page section of the page click on Oracle Instant Client. I'll be demonstrating today with the Mac so let's go to the Mac OS and you notice there are a couple packages here the basic package and the basic light package we can do with the basic light package since we're going to demonstrate this for the US. And additionally, we're going to download SQL Plus package because we want SQL Plus client. When you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see some instructions that tell you how to configure and set up SQL Plus to connect uh, to any database. So we'll follow these instructions and we'll create an instant client 19 underscore 19 underscore 3 directory inside our user's home directory. And we'll put the instant client files there as well as a SQL plus library files in there. So let's go look at our downloads. The first file that we downloaded already got extracted into this 193 folder. When you look in here, you'll see all the uh, instant client files. When the second file downloaded the same name, it obtained the appended the dash two file at the end. And you notice this has a SQL plus files in it. I'm going to drag these into the user's home directory. So I'm going to open another finder window. And I'm going to navigate to the user's home directory. So Macintosh hard disk, users, and this is my current user. And I'm just going to drag the instant client into this home directory. Oops, didn't mean to grab both. Let me just grab this one. And then we'll open the SQL plus files, highlight those files, right click, copy the six items and paste them in here. Now what I have is an instant client underscore 19 underscore 3 directory that has the Oracle instant client files as well as the SQL plus additions. Let's go back to our instructions and see what the next step is. So we completed steps, uh, step two here after we download the files. Now we're going to create a library folder. And we're going to skip the user local bin. We'll use the library folder. And basically, uh, these are the two commands that we need to issue. So let's go ahead and do those on the terminal window. Let's do a present working directory. Notice that we are at our home directory here, CBA do loaner. So this is our home directory. We'll make directory. So we have a library directory now. And we're going to make a symbolic link from our instant client library files into um, this library folder that we just created. I'm just going to copy and paste that rather than typing it. So copy. Go back to our terminal window, paste, hit enter. Now look what we have. We'll do a long listing, ls l. Here's our instant client 19.3, and this is a library folder we just created. If we go into that library folder and do a directory listing, there's a symbolic link we just created. Alternatively, we could have made this directory and copied all these library files in there, but we followed the first step. Okay, the next step is to 
get the connection information into our Oracle database. So this is a TNS name, SQLNet.org, and so on. So the best way to get these in order to connect to our database, you sped up the video here. Basically, you go to the Oracle Cloud infrastructure, to your database, and download the wallet. into our instant client network admin directory. So instant client network admin. We need to put the wallet files in here. So let's go ahead and open this wallet. Uh, by double clicking on it, it unzipped and I created another folder here. Let's open that and let's grab all these files, copy them, paste them into the network admin directory of the instant client. And there are two readme files. I guess there's a readme file that's over going to write the existing one. I don't need both, so I can just replace. The file that we want to look at here is a tnsnames.or file. I already have that ORA associated with a text writer. So I'm going to double click on this thing and open it with text writer. Now look, these are the connection strings that I can use uh, when I use my SQL plus to connect to Oracle and I don't want to type Azure DB underscore high every time I connect to the database or Azure DB underscore low and so on so I'm going to copy this Azure high and paste it above here oops I missed my copy so let me redo that copy and paste And I'm just going to rename this as high, so I don't have to type, oops, excuse me. A couple of typos, fat fingering it. All right, high. The difference between the high, low, and medium R is that the high focuses on SQL commands uh, performance, whereas low uh, focuses on concurrent connections. But uh, for class purposes, it doesn't really make a difference. Okay, so let's close that. And let's see where we are with our instructions. And here is the file. So we have completed step four now. Now the next step is to, we can skip this TNS admin because basically we're putting all the files in this uh, network admin directory. So let's go ahead and create uh, in our we're going to add the instant client 19.3 to our path. So SQL plus uh, in the library files and so on can be recognized from the terminal window. So let me copy this and go to our terminal and paste that path. And let's hit enter. And now we should be able to type SQL plus to launch SQL plus. However, SQL Plus cannot be opened because uh, Mac OS Catalina does not recognize the software, so it thinks it could be malware. So we need to go into our system preferences and allow it to execute this. So we'll go to the, from the Apple, System Preferences, Security and Privacy, and we will click on this lock, provide our credentials. And go to, you know, so there's an app store and there's app and um, identify developers. We'll need to go in here and allow SQL Plus to execute. So let's not move us to the trash. Let's hit cancel. And notice that um, the security and privacy uh, lets us know that SQL Plus wanted to execute. And I'll say allow anyway. Okay. And now let's try this again. Now we have a library that actually it's saying that uh, SQL Plus wants to run. Do you want to open it? Say yes, we do want to open it. 
but we have a library here that's trying to run now and um, that's the next one we're going to need to allow the security and privacy to let it execute so we'll hit cancel here and say allow anyway and try to run this again and say yes we want to open this You'll need to repeat this process for about five, six times for the different libraries I want to execute. You could change a setting in your operating system to ignore this, but uh, I'll just go through this real quickly and uh, sped up the video here a little bit. Just continue doing it until you get through all the libraries. To open, and finally, we're able to run this uh, program. So we'll put our username as admin at hi. Remember I changed up the TNS names to just say hi. And provide your password. And we're connected. Uh, if you recall, we had a table called uh, table one. So let's see if it's here. And here it is, we could describe table one. And here it is with the two attributes. So you're connected from uh, your Mac on SQL plus to the Oracle database. Now, there's one more thing you need to do, however. Notice if I exit here and I exit terminal and I run another terminal command. And I type SQL plus. It doesn't know where it is. If you look in our path, we lost the path to the Oracle Instant Client installation, this path that we created here. So I could go ahead and run this again. And I can run SQL plus. And you see that it does run. And if we look at the path, notice that it does append the location with the instant client underscore 19 underscore 3 there. However, we don't want to type this every time. So how do we get around this? What we need to do is we need to create, in the startup of the Z shell, we need to have this command executed. So the way you do that is you modify a file called dot z shell rc so basically any text editor you want i'm going to do it with nano nano dot z s h r c this is the file that will executes basically every time a z shell is uh, is initiated so we're going to edit that and we could go ahead and just copy and paste that path however i like to uh, put that path at the end so i'm going to type export path equal I'm gonna take my existing path first and then I'm gonna append the instant client path to that so I'm gonna append the users current directory slash instant client underscore 19 underscore 3 let me make sure I didn't make any typos instant client underscore 19 underscore 3 and I can do control O to save that. So control O and it's gonna say the file name to write to. I'll say yes, this is the file I want. And a control X to get out. So I'm gonna do control X. And notice that if I type the file out, if I do cat.zshrc, I now have that file there. So let me um, exit this terminal and start a new terminal. And I'll echo the path here. And notice that appended to the previous path, we now have the user, CBA, loaner, instant client, and so on. So when I type SQL plus, indeed it does run, and I will connect one last time just to show that it does connect. So admin at hi, and the password for the database. And that's it, we're connected.